Elise, brilliant to see you, mate. Uh, oh, finally home. It seems like you've been travelling everywhere. Tell us about your year. Yeah, it has been a big year. I think um, uh, just firstly the, the increase in our schedule over the last little bit um, and the amount of opportunity we've now got to play play away um, during the, the calendar is pretty amazing. Uh, I think particularly the addition of the WPL um, at the back end of last summer was pretty amazing. And then, um, yeah, since then it's sort of not stopped rolling, which has been been a lot of fun um, and, and really cool to experience. Let's talk about your World Cup victory. Yet another one for you. How do you compare them all throughout your career? I think it's hard to compare, like... Uh, probably just the context of each one and um, where the team was at the time and, and I guess um, you know how we played those World Cups but also I think just the sport in general like it's it changes really really quickly at the moment and I think every two years you know it's an entirely different sort of competition um, and you know even this this last one to play South Africa in South Africa um, at Newlands for the, the final was just phenomenal and, and obviously nice to be successful but to have a packed house there um, I think you know it did a lot for the sport and, and, and for the South African team as well um, throughout that tournament so yeah it was really cool. How have you enjoyed this transition for you as the young gun to the experienced superstar to now one that's watching all these young kids coming through and trying to nurture them. Do you, do you enjoy that role? Um, to be honest with Joe, like a large part of me maybe naively thinks I'm still that, that young kid yeah. um, or maybe just wants to still be that young kid. Um, but I think it's nice to kind of hold on to that feeling a bit, like it's sort of a, a really nice... I guess excitement to, to that and um, it's been really cool that that sort of remained with me the whole way through playing and, and I haven't really felt like I've got old or weary throughout my time but having said that um, yeah age doesn't lie either so I am kind of like towards the back end at least um, and I think you know just seeing where the sport's gone and as you mentioned like these young young players coming through and just how you know prodigiously talented they are and um I think what they're offering the sport now and, and also offering the girls who have been in the team for a while has been been great to be a part of. And, um, you know, they're all great friends too, which is really cool. Yeah, Teach me cool. lots about um, TikTok and <laughs> things that I should and shouldn't say that's not cool and what's cool. So, yeah, it's very cool. Do they get you involved in any of the TikTok dances? Oh, I'm an abstinent no. Yeah, uh, yeah. absolutely no <laughs> chance. I can't dance to save my life. Um, but I like watching theirs. They do great. When you first started playing, it would have been fun. Is, is it still fun for you? Oh, yeah, it's still lots of fun. I certainly haven't worked a day in my life, which um, I feel very fortunate to, to sort of be in that position. Boulder! Perry goes big. I think it's been fun too because it's changed so much. So every year is a bit different. The way that the sport's grown and developed over the, the course of time that I've been involved is just, like, so exciting. Um, and to see... I guess the possibilities ahead as well is, is even more exciting. So, um, yeah, that keeps it fun. I mean, it's a, it's, a different, if it's, it's a different feel to what it was at the start and spending so much time together now and, and being away so much and, and having probably a lot more um, responsibility and commitment around that um, comes with a, a different kind of environment, I guess, than when I first started. But, yeah, you learn to kind of manage that and find what fits best for you and then still keep it really fun. Lovely shot. That gap certainly got uh, pretty small now, isn't it, Australia and <laughs> England? They are literally yeah. the big rivals. It's it's an interesting one, the gap. Uh, like, I think certainly, like, over the last couple of years, we've obviously had some wonderful success and been consistently successful. But I think at the same time, like, a lot, is, a lot of that's come with really tight and close games, whether it's been against England or India. New Zealand, South Africa at times. I think we've just kind of been the consistent thread in that as the team kind of managing to get over the line and, and win yeah. tournaments or at least be part of the big moment. So I think, like, perhaps the gap hasn't really been as big as everyone's perceived, but what's happened now is I think, you know, more often than not, they're really tight games and we're being challenged regularly by lots of different teams. But you must be really pleased with how you're playing. <laughs> yeah, look, I'm I'm really enjoying it. I think that gives me more pleasure than anything. Um, certainly, yeah, like the last little bit, the chance to, I guess, um, 
improve my game and, and change a little bit of the way that I've played, I've, I've loved that opportunity as well and, and sort of working that out. And yeah, I guess still fitting around a framework that I know is me and, and, and how I play the game just because I think, you know, you can't fake it, particularly at this level. Yeah. But um, it's been really nice to be part of this group. I think that's, that's kind of the thing, like the chance to play in, in our team at the moment, like you jump at the bit, it's just such an exciting time. So yeah, it's, it's been nice to be there. Where, where is home nowadays? <laughs> Us Victorians like to claim you as a yeah. Victorian now. Now I am a Victorian. Um, yep, home is Melbourne. So, yeah, um, yeah I, I love getting back there, actually. It's been a really nice um, change of scenery for me in the last, like, four or five years. And, you know, I've still got all my family in Sydney, so yeah. I'd like to say, selfishly, I've, I've got two homes. Um, Melbourne's where I live, but, but whenever I come back to Sydney, I definitely feel at home too. And, you know, certainly playing for the Sixers during the WBB, I don't, um, yeah, I don't feel like a visitor. I sort of feel like I'm, I'm back home as well, so that's nice. Elise Perry hits it nicely. Got up. What motivates you still to keep driving to be the best you? Oh, I just, I love, I love that side of, of sport. Um, I love the opportunity to like keep finding a way to get better and learning new things and and being a part of I think um, what is an, an amazing time for women's sport is mm. motivation in itself like um, I know it's been amazingly strongly talked about but the Matildas like um, you know this year and, and what they did um, to the landscape of women's sport in our country but also globally um, I think you know so many sports are benefiting from that and in the same way that I think you know at different times we probably helped other sports benefit so it like feels like this really strong connection between various women's leagues at the moment and and the way that I guess we're all working towards galvanizing the, you know fans and country and you know, media and broadcasts and all those kinds of things to, to really take notice of the sport. And with that comes, like, amazing new opportunities and experiences, which, um, yeah, as I said, is truly motivating. I mean, you are inspiring another generation, and I know that means a lot to you. You're seeing yeah. young girls in particular, but also young boys looking up to you and wanting to be like you. Yeah, well, I think I probably think about my ch childhood and that's still all my fondest memories of sport to, to a large extent um, you know learning to play in the backyard with my dad and, and my older brother and 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 mum and then like you know trying out different sports meeting different friends at different clubs and um, you know going on different trips away and you know some of my my best friends are, are some of the boys that I I grew up playing club cricket with um, you know on a Saturday morning yeah. around Sydney so I think you know, that opportunity and um, the importance that sport plays, um, you know, for, for our kids and, and just for society in general, whether that's as, as a player or as a volunteer or as an administrator or just a fan or whatever it is, you know, the more that that kind of grows and develops and is strong for, for our kids today, the brighter the future is in a lot of respects. Piers, what about the achievement? 6,000 runs, 300 wickets, first in international cricket, men or women. Does that mean anything to you? You've heard all the adulation, you've heard the stats. What does it mean to you? Uh, I think we were chatting before about my age. Um, I think it means I've been around for a long time. Um, and, yeah, just played in a lot of games, really. But, uh, yeah, it, I mean, I guess those things on an individual level... Are really nice like they always feel feel great and makes me like realize just how lucky I've been as well and how much support I've had along the way and I think sometimes with the the individual stat stuff it's probably something that I, I love sharing with dad a bit because yeah. like more than more than anyone like he's kind of been there from the start and always helped me out and you know taught me how to play so um yeah I mean it's it's a nice thing to be able to to share but um more than anything, it's definitely a reflection of my age. <laughs> is, dad a, is dad a stats nerd? Um, do you know That's a great question. I don't know. Um, part of me says yes because he, he was a maths teacher, um, oh. but we never talk about stats, so I don't really know when it comes to sport how big it, he is into it. Um, yeah, if you ask him about prime numbers, he's all over it. But right. I, don't know, I don't know about um, <laughs> cricket stats. <laughs> great answer, mate.